So friends, like what exactly if we do in more, uh, manual testing, okay, you have your, you, if you are in some uh, working for a client and they have already built an application and they want someone to test it, okay, they hire 50, 10 to 15 resources just to test their application, it's working up and running because they have to deliver it to their clients, they have to deliver to their users, there should not be any problem in the live environment what they have, okay. That's the reason people are putting so much of money, the company is putting so much of money in hiring the resources just to see the things are up and running, okay. Because there, there is not one application, if I say if, if there is a client, uh, right, in examples also I'll try, I won't take the client names friends because I have also worked with many clients so I don't want to reveal the names but if I feel I'll reveal the name if it is a very good example, okay. So in my, uh, there are many clients who have 1000 plus or 2000 plus web applications, okay. So they cannot hire a single or two or three resource to test all those on regular basis, okay. They need, they need to hire 15 to 20 resources, okay. If it is an average based company, if it is a CMI level 5 company, they will be hiring 60 to 70, maybe 800. In, in one of my project, that was an European project, in India itself we have, in Bangalore and Chennai, we had 800 plus resources for testing and that, that, that was a very big client for European uh, banking sector, okay. They do tra authentication during transaction in ATMs, when you do a transaction in your ATM, they, in between the authentication process they do it. And they do, they have lots of uh, web applications internal also, okay. So it's not that all web applications which are there on the internet which you can see are the only web applications, no. Internally in the company also they have many applications, okay. So they need, they hire the resources, okay. They, the resources has to test the applications on regular basis, okay. They have a very short deadline and they have to do thousands plus transactions. If you are from a testing background, you can analyze the scenario, okay. You can see what pain you are having then you have to do it, okay. If it is a one time effort, it's okay. If you are tell me to do it again, it's okay. But r the thing is that you have to keep the things testing on regular basis, that's what the, uh, that, that's the reason why company has hired you, okay. So that is a very big pain point that you have to do, test the application on regular basis, okay. And you get few uh, change in your application and what will happen, uh, you have to test the uh, new functionality that has been added to it along with the original functionality that you have, okay. You have to validate like, uh, like if it is a web application, okay. There are scenarios that you have to download the report from the web and you have to validate the reports as well. That is also a very big pain point because report will be too big to validate it, to validate that thing against your database, okay. I have downloaded a report from web application it has 1000 plus records. I have to validate that thing against a DB. I'll be downloading it, I'll go to the DB, I'll put up the data, uh, means I'll fire a query, I'll then manually I'll be comparing it. And people don't go with exact calculation, they go with assumption, okay, looks like data is correct. Out of 100 you'll check for 2 or 5 or 10, not complete 100. But, so that is uh, one of the pain point. And uh, like once you do the manual testing, whatever functional testing or regression testing you do in your company, okay. If I am using any jargon friends, let me know if you like I am using functional testing and regression testing, if any one of you has a question what it is, let me know, okay. If it is okay with you guys, then uh, that's good. So once you do the manual testing, what process you follow, okay. So once you validate the things, you have to take the screenshot, in that screenshot you have to uh, highlight the things, okay, this is what I have validated. In If you have a test case, in one scenario you have, like if you get one, uh, something to test, okay, you will have four to five, two, 500 to 600 things to test at the same time. So can one resource do it? No. Can two resources do it quickly? No. So that's the reason they are hiring more resources though. So if I want to complete 1000 test cases quickly, that is also a small part of your application because actually you had 
4000 or 5000 maybe 10000 test cases complete test cases for your application out of that i need to check 1000 test cases for in two days because daily we have other things as well to do so client don't want to test all the time they want they'll give you a common functionality hire six to seven resources already in the team which are there they already know the application and they'll test it and give back to you so they'll divide the work they'll do the reporting part and send back to the team that takes lots of time okay so this guy is crying actually why should i do the same process again and again without any change in flow <laughs> maybe it shouldn't be with you guys you guys are not trying right when you got these types of scenarios or you it's the same thing with you guys also okay so understanding the business requirement you will get some scenario requirement from your client then you will test uh, lab planning then you need to plan that how exactly you need to do it because you won't be knowing the application if you are new to let's always imagine a scenario don't imagine yourself to be an expert okay always imagine a scenario that you are new to the application how should i do it okay because you are not there to test the application whole life okay today you are in one project with working with one application in the same project you will get a new requirement okay so there is nev yeah you can be an expert in doing up some excel thing or a scenario but if new application comes with you you again become something again becomes a uh, fresh uh, thing comes to you okay there is nothing again again you have to go through the document and do it then you have to design it and then you will do the execution so first three phase itself will take time and then test execution will be uh, a very big thing so they'll divide it in the resources and then you will log the defect if it is there okay so it will go to the production team uh, uh, technic development team that is the team which he has which has developed the application and they'll see the defect log and they'll fix up the things and in the next release it will come as a fixed okay so this guy is thinking why should i do his question is that just just see he is he is saying something he is not saying that i don't want to do testing this guy is saying why should i why should i do the same process again and again the problem the pain point is thing that i have the repetition of thing there is no end to it okay so if we go with automation testing like tools like selenium we can automate the processes whatever pain point this guy is having okay and what what effort he has to put he just have to prepare a test script and just put it on execution and go for break or lock your system and you can do unattended execution whole day you can do your job put it put the things on execution and go home and come back by the time everything will be up and ready for you so that you can go ahead with the next process so we can automate this steps that i have discussed here okay with automation and then this guy is saying that oh wow now i don't have to do the same process again and again and that's what automation is okay so along with manual testing you have db testing you have to get get the manually you have to get get the data out from the database put it in your uh, test cases and once you will get the data by firing an sql query then if if you want to get the data you need then you need to be an expert in sql that then again it's a pain point you need to learn if it is not if you don't know so if already someone has written why not to think in that way if someone is someone has already done the thing why not to reuse it but when you do with manually get the data out of it how can you reuse it there is no option but when you do with automation let's take a case i am in a project and i am doing some work and i have written a query to get the data out of it okay once i leave the project and i'll go i'll join another project now new resource will come again he has to learn the thing i have to transfer the knowledge to him okay this is how you have to do this is the place where you have to go okay so when, but when you do with automation you don't have to do tell him each and everything just tell him that this this is the place where exactly you just have to put the query that's it and let, obviously he he has to know few things but he has he don't have to do everything from scratch okay maybe he can uh, add a new query to it but no need to do uh, again everything from scratch writing in that get the data with the in manual testing this is a problem but with automation you can do once and just reuse it okay so now this slide is very important you need to understand where exactly automation is being used okay friends it is using uh, like all financial banking companies are using it telecom e-commerce 
and uh, all like uh, education educational websites blogs everyone is using automation because the application is fixed the processes are fixed and they want to test it on regular basis okay so when you do do manually you don't test the application more than five times in a month i'm very sure you cannot you won't do it you won't test each and everything more than five times in in a month okay in a month let's take a case in a month you won't test the applications functionality but when you so if you do it five times also in a month and test the some functionality that is also a very good thing okay but when you do with automation you do 24 by 7 uh, testing of your functionality okay every night i'll design an engine which will be running 24 by 7 next morning whenever i'll come if i feel if i wanted to see that everything is working fine or not because i will what we'll do we'll try to generate the output in the form of report i don't want to put my head in a junk data I want a meaningful data out from my execution. Okay, I just wanted to see next morning I'll come, I'll open a document which will be auto-generated in my system. I'll open it, I'll see how many pass, how many fail, at what time, how much time each execution took, and what if it failed, what was the reason. To find the reason, automatically a screenshot will be taken. I'll go to a specific folder where exactly it got failed. I'll see the screenshot and I'll come to know this, that, that was the reason. That sounds good, right? You don't, you, you can imagine the scenario, right? The one I have explained to you. This is how it is, okay? You, what you do it, you have to, when you do the things, then you can show a proof. Here, you have to put it on execution next day or if, if it is a very big, maybe a whole day it will take if you have 10,000 things to validate in web application, you can have a dedicated machine for testing and things will be auto-generated for you and it will, you can see the count. Maybe in one row or two row, you can see the overall status of your execution. Okay. At the same time, an auto test results file will also be generated. So we will be coming up, like what all the things gets auto generated, what all the, what, how much effort I have to put, like that way we have to think. Okay. One of the phase, like it's like uh, once you do the test execution and test designing, the, the screenshots that you can see in the right hand side, those things you have to do. So you have to load the things manually, you have to create a test result file so that you can show it to your client or to an SME who is uh, actually a very expert in uh, the application because someone has to be there in, to review your data. Okay, then validation of uh, the checkpoints that your uh, client has asked you to do it. Okay. So what all the things you are doing it here manually creating test result files taking screenshots for validation points loading all the documents on share drive for SME review and sharing files with other resources. So once you do the manual testing you need to generate some reporting part right so that your higher management can understand okay. So let's go to the next slide. So this is what you have to do so that it can help you help the higher management to understand. Okay, friends, right now I am trying to create as much scenario I can. Okay, because I want you to think the problem. Okay, what 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 problem we have? Okay, so once you when see why higher management need higher management is not at all interested what is there in your test script. Okay, it is interested whether it is pass or fail whether things are going correctly or not, whether whatever process we followed in la, uh, last three months, is it going correctly or not. That output will help them in do graphical and geography analysis. That thing will help them in analyzing how much resource it took to automate uh, th to test thousand transactions. So that will decide them, uh, that will give them a decision factor on financial analysis. They can do data analysis like how many pass fail. They can do graph and chart analysis. So when you do graph and chart analysis, you have manually you create the test cases and all those things. Once you do the functional testing, you will create, download the things. And with that data, you will put it in an Excel sheet. That is the best way, the best thing that all everyone is doing. Okay. In all, most of the companies, they are using an Excel sheet in that they'll put up the data. Excel is very actually a very good thing to uh, restructure your data and you will 
reform it in form of a chart or a bar graph. Okay, so that you can represent it. Okay, so this is the thing that you are doing it. Okay, okay. <coughs> like uh, Pavel, please ex Pavel has a question. Please explain how it helps in geography analysis. Okay, uh, Pavel. See, I'll give you a very good example. I had a client. Uh, there was a client. Uh, actually, it was an authentication. Uh, company which uh, do uh, an authentication during financial transactions okay so what com what that company was doing that company was having it was a us project only okay so what that company had it was having many clients throughout the globe okay so how that geography and uh, like how it was helping in geography analysis they validate they test uh, UK transactions separately. They test in. They'll test India transactions separately. They'll test different parts of the world wherever the things are running up and running. Okay. If I say because see things has been globalized. If I today I launch my web application, someone from the corner of the world. If I am sitting in one corner and the uh, someone is sitting at the other corner of the world can see. Okay. So we all are connected through internet. That is, that is very sure. Okay, that is that we all know. We all are connected through internet. Now, what that company was doing, it was analyzing the uh, uh, applications in a specific locations. That how it is working in that location. How it is working in that location. And that payment process uh, actually was of an e-commerce site. Like they have uh, actually, it was a banking company like uh, they have some online portal okay you can buy a credit card with that you, they have a separate portal okay so they want to analyze how things are working in different different parts of the location okay so whatever output they get from the live data like because uh, if my today's my application is running many people are doing some <clears throat> pro, uh, buying something many things from there and is there any uh, that they do the payment process so some data gets generated from there okay so what that company was doing they were taking taking up to that data and analyzing how now now the analysis comes okay what was the total profit they made it was actually the business is actually running up in that part of the uh, country or not if not then they'll they have a separate uh, like they'll give more discounts to that part of the country so like that way it was okay so depending upon the region to region they are <coughs> analyzing the geographical analysis this is how it is it was working okay and one more thing is that uh, um, there was a uh, one application uh, called uh, content management okay so they they put their it was like C CMS like I think you can take a WordPress example also so even WordPress also they put up their data depending on their region okay like in country they'll analyze it what kind of documents these people are reading Depen then they'll see what kind of documents that other countries are. so you can do data analysis depending upon the uh, live data what you get from your web application okay so that data where it will be it will be in your database or somewhere in your application okay everyone don't have all the uh, level of access so an admin can log in get the data and see okay this is how what the data has come so every time they have to go and look into it okay every time you have to go and look into it so why not to automate that process and get the meaning uh, aggregate data consolidated data from there and put it in form of a report 